Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm designing some creatures and characters for my fairy world. Many of you enjoyed this video where I designed characters for my fairy world that I've been working on. And I also really enjoyed it, so I wanted to do another. Especially since I've been really wanting to design the villain of the story. But we will also be designing other creatures and characters I've had in my head. So let's jump into it. We are going to start by designing some tree creatures. So the fairy creatures like Pariah mostly handle growing plants like flowers. However, for trees I wanted there to be different creatures. I wanted a design that is simple and friendly, but I also didn't want to get too close to them looking like Koroks. <laughs> this first design is roughly inspired by Hetsu's round shape. Hetsu is a Korok from Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. But I made the limbs more bulky and round. I played around with the face a lot <laughs> and I couldn't decide on one and I wasn't sure if I was happy with this body shape so I tried drawing a different one. For this version it's going to feel a bit older like a wise old tree elder. I made the face appear to have bushy eyebrows and a mustache. The shape of the body isn't as round and is longer to help the tree person have a more mature feeling. Now I did like this design but I also liked the round design too. And I thought, why not have both? <laughs> Maybe this is what the tree people look like as they age, but when they are younger, they are more round and simple. This led me to designing a small child version, and I think they are very cute. Instead of full-on tree branches, I give them just little stick nubs with a few leaves. Also, their hands start out as not having fingers, but as they get older, they kind of get hands. I thought this helped them stay cute and simple when they're little, but they get more detailed as they get older. At this point, the bodies were feeling very empty to me, kind of in the center. So to help fill them in, I add some swirly circles. And this gave me the idea that maybe as the tree person gets older, the belly part in the middle gets more and more swirls, almost like the middle of a tree. So the younger trees will have less swirls on their belly. I feel like this really helped the design feel more finished. Now that I have my sketches, I'm going to clean things up. To be honest, I don't know if tree people will ever really make an appearance in Pariah's story, but I wanted to at least know what they look like in case I want to add them into backgrounds or as a side story thing. In Pariah's world, I imagine the tree people are pretty rare and are not commonly seen. Their birth rate is pretty low. My idea is that when the tree people die, they become trees, and not long after they become trees, there's a chance for new seedlings to be born. Oh, also I imagine the tree people's appearance changes depending on what kind of tree they are. Maybe I can design variations sometime in the future. Like I said, I don't know if any of this will be in Pariah's story. It's kind of just extra world building stuff for my own amusement. <laughs> but anyways, here are my tree people. I added in Pariah for scale. I do want to have an actual name for the tree people, but a certain someone was super hard to name, so I didn't have time to name them. Uh, so if you have any suggestions, let me know. The next creature I wanted to design is the grass growers. For some reason, I've always had the idea in my head that grass is grown by little bug-like creatures. In my head, they were super simple, round, and kind of cute. But when I drew it out, it felt a bit too basic. So I decided to keep playing around with the designs. I brought in a picture of grass seeds to help me get inspired and for some reason when I was looking at it, it made me think of like jellyfish tentacles, kind of. I don't know, this was kind of an out there idea but I still kind of like it. <laughs> I like the idea of little grass jellyfish growing grass, even if it doesn't really make sense. Uh, for some reason the seeds also made me think of dragonflies. I got the idea that maybe they can release seeds from the back half of their body. Also, I was not using a reference, so this is what a dragonfly looks like when I try to draw one from memory. <laughs> uh, so I felt like I should try this again, but I will find some references. <laughs> Even though I am drawing from a reference on my phone, I still want to stylize the dragonfly and make it cartoony. I want the creatures to fit in with the more simple designs of my chibi elf style. As you can tell by these different designs, different plants grow in different ways in Pariah's world. When it comes to flower people like Pariah, they are able to create seeds using magic. This magic draws from their life force and recharges over time. So like making a seed uses a decent amount of magic and life force energy. But if a fairy wanted to say make a seed and then have the seed grow fairly quickly into a flower, it would require more magic. Some fairies have greater magic capacity than others, 
like the Demi Royals and the Royals. Anyways, here are my little grass growers. If Pariah didn't already have Mr. Froggy, I would maybe make this be her animal companion. I think it turned out cute. <laughs> I'm not going to go super in depth into this next design, but I was wondering what mushroom growers would look like. I wanted them to be kind of a variation of the flower people. Like maybe they have a mushroom on their head and their bodies are more linky and simple. They almost lack a bone structure. The mushroom people in my head are different from the flower people because Carson is different from the flower people. A long time ago when I first designed Carson, I decided that he grows moss and the moss he grows grows on his head like hair. He's able to grow moss from the spores released by his hair, therefore he does not use magic. Um, since mushrooms also grow via spores, I figured they would be like Carson. They would grow mushrooms on their heads and release spores from the mushrooms. Also, I gave this mushroom character round ears on a whim, but then I got the idea that maybe pointed ears indicates magic users. Therefore, I'll have to give Carson rounded ears instead of the pointed ears he has had. Uh, but I feel like I like this idea and detail of having non-magic users have round ears and magic users having pointed ears. Because this would help indicate that Pariah is a magic user, but she's just not able to use it for some reason. Oh, also, I wanted to be able to give the mushroom people hair. So to make this possible, I'm going to make the mushroom kind of grow from the center and then around that hair grows. It kind of makes the mushroom look more like a hat, but I'm okay with this. <laughs> also random, but I was wondering how they sleep or lay down. And my solution is that the mushroom top lays off the bed, I guess. I don't know. That's the only solution I could think of. <laughs> so this is the final thing I'll be working on before jumping into designing the villain. I wanted to revisit the house designs because there was a comment on this video that was an amazing idea. So in my other video, I was talking about how I like the idea of a fantasy house made out of mushrooms and stuff. But I was wondering how the fairies would keep the houses from rotting. So I opted to have the houses be more logical and a little bit more like human houses. But this comment said, you could always make the houses appear as mushrooms or pumpkins as a sort of deception for natural predators. That way you can still make cute fantasy homes, plus have it logically make sense. And I love this so much, that's such a good idea. So yeah, I wanted to take a crack at designing some homes that look like other things like mushrooms. And I felt like this looked really cute. I also thought maybe I could make homes that look like cabbage or like lettuce and pumpkins. Uh, but next I wanted to revisit Pariah's home. Since her caretaker grows yellow roses, I still wanted the house to be flowery. At first I thought maybe I could just have the house be surrounded by rose bushes. And I guess this is okay, but I wasn't loving it. I then thought maybe I could have the home be shaped like a flower pot that holds a small rose bush. And I have to say, I was really liking this, but then when I came back and looked at the design later, I thought, wait, where are the roots for the plant growing? <laughs> and I got sad because I thought this was cute, but it doesn't really work. Um, and I didn't draw this, but my solution is that basically there is like a pot within the pot. So like an empty area in the middle of the home where the roots can go down into the ground or soil. And maybe there's like some dirt in the middle of the home that's kind of encased with wall. Um, so yeah, the house is kind of built around the roots. So I would need to make the home be wider, uh, but the concept does work, I feel like. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for this idea. I will totally use it and play around with it some more. And now it's time to design the villain. I was both excited and nervous for this. My previous and current stories have had villains or antagonists, but they don't really look like villains. Plus, I didn't have a super strong image in my head for this villain. I actually spent some time looking at villains from different fairy type movies to maybe help me get inspired. And after taking some time to think and brainstorm, I came up with a concept. For the base of the character, I knew I wanted him to be tall and have a larger build to make him be more intimidating. I make his shoulders and ribcage fairly broad. Also, he's going to have very large wings since his magical abilities are very strong. Reminder that Demi Royals have smaller wings and Royals have larger wings. So larger wings kind of indicates bigger magic capacity. 
You'll notice I'm drawing the ends of his limbs in an interesting way, and that is because this character grows a plant known as a strangler fig. Now technically, a strangler fig is in the tree family, however they grow so differently from a standard tree that I figured I could get away with making the villain not a tree person but a fairy person. But it's something I've been going back and forth on. I may just get rid of the tree people and have trees be grown by fairies as well because I really need the villain to be a strangler fig and to be able to use magic. I don't know, what do you think? Get rid of the tree people for consistency or keep them since the strangler fig is pretty different from normal trees? Uh, anyways, the strangler fig, as the name suggests, strangles trees. It grows down from the tops of trees and as it grows down, it wraps around the tree and puts its roots into the ground and steals nutrients from the tree. I'm making his arms and leg be like the strangler fig. My explanation for why they are like this is because the villain is using so much of their magic and life force, it's making their body start to become the plant. He's overexerting himself. Um, but for now, let's keep moving. I am sketching out the face and hair. At first, my idea was to have the whole face be a simple mask with openings for the eyes. For the hair, I want it to be very curly and in kind of dreadlocks that are very long kind of to mimic the feeling of the plant. I wasn't really liking the mask, so I tried drawing a face, but then he didn't feel intimidating enough, so I wasn't liking this, uh, but I decided to keep moving. For his wings, they're going to be kind of breaking apart. Once again, this is a byproduct of him overexerting his magical power. So back to the face, I tried playing around with the mask idea again, I also thought since he is based off of a strangler fig that maybe I should have him have something wrapping around his neck. And I was quite liking this. I have the vine-like shapes wrap around his neck and also onto the mask. I decided to try drawing this in side view to make sure I can make this work. Sometimes things make sense in one view but not in another, so it's good to test the design in different ways. For the outfit, I tried a few different things. My plan was to make a pretty detailed outfit. However, I randomly drew a long cape and I kind of loved it, <laughs> but I told myself that was too simple. So I tried drawing a third outfit and it was okay, but like the cape is so cool. <laughs> I thought I could make the cape be more interesting by having the root kind of texture all over it. Okay, so I was vibing with this concept, but now I need to decide colors and I basically just played around with different combos of brown, purple, green, and orange until I was happy. I wanted to use colors from the strangler fig and its fruits in the design, so I felt limited to this color palette. So at this point, I felt like I needed to try just drawing this character to see if I liked the design. I felt like I liked it, but I was also still feeling a bit iffy. Also, his name is Koru. I figured I should tell you because I'm tired of trying to not refer to him by his name. <laughs> and I actually can't really explain why I chose this name to you because I feel like it may spoil things. But yeah, his name is Koru. Uh, there is lore I want to explain on this character, but I also don't want to spoil the story. So I'm sorry that I'm unable to go into all the details I have about this character. So if he seems kind of shallow, I promise he does have backstory and lore. I just can't tell you about it. Okay, so I was doing this sketch and as I'm sketching, I randomly drew this circle because I felt like he needed something around the chest area and this circle changed everything. It even added some lore to the world and character and it was just what I was looking for. <laughs> so we are going back to the drawing board. Now the circle is going to be a stone that enhances Koru's power. I want the stone to be touching him and it's going to be encased in a kind of strangler fig vest sort of thing. However, since I want the stone to be touching him, Koru is not going to be wearing a shirt, but the vest covers a lot of his torso, so it's not too revealing. I wanted to make sure the vest goes up around the neck like before. Uh, for his pants, they are high-waisted and have a wide band. They flare out at the bottom and come in at the ankle. I feel like these pants help balance out the silhouette and give the vibe I want. I also brought in pops of orange since the fruit of the strangler fig is often orange. I kind of kept trying to add a shirt or a cloak, but I felt like it kept ruining the flow of the silhouette. Plus, Koru is a tropical plant, so he is surrounded by humidity and warmth. 
And I feel like this outfit helps communicate that. Oh, and before his feet were kind of just tree root shapes, but I didn't really like this. So I found references for bones in the feet and kind of used them as a guide to draw something more convincing. And we are revisiting the face again. <laughs> This time I decided to go with no mask. In my head, Koru is very prideful and wants to be known. So having him hide behind a mask just doesn't quite fit his character. However, to help him feel scary, I'm going to make the scleras of his eyes be black and he'll have bright orange pupils. I imagine this is a side effect of the gem. Also, I kept drawing him with my usual nose style, but this kept making him feel like he wasn't being drawn in my chibi elf style. So I tried drawing the nose like I do for the other characters, and I felt like this helped. I kept the hair mostly the same, except I draw some hair that comes off the side and is tied. I don't know, I just thought it added more detail to the hair and made it interesting. His hair is very fun to draw. I basically just draw lines with my watercolor brush that I made and it's set to the thickness that I want the hair to be and it makes a texture that I really like for it. Lastly I fill in the base colors and I think I now have Koru's design for the most part. <laughs> like with how I wanted to try drawing the other design I am now testing out drawing this design and I do have to say I can tell I'm not done with this design yet. There are things I want to improve on mostly being the vest it feels a little too futury with the way I drew it. I kind of want to make it feel more like the first neck wrap thing that I drew. Sadly, I ran out of time for working on this design for the video, but perhaps in future videos I'll revisit his design and tweak it some. That being said, I do feel like he has the feeling I want. He feels like a villain to me. And I guess I never really told you what he's doing that's making him be a villain. <laughs> Um, so basically, without getting too deep into lore, he is trying to make the fairy island only be habitable for tropical plants and is also releasing a deadly miasma. He is able to do this because he is using his strangler fig abilities to take over the main plant that controls the climate of the island. I'm still working on designs and concepts for this plant, but it will be very large and kind of the center of the island, almost like the pixie dust tree. The fairies rely on this plant for their way of life, and now it's being used against them. So yeah, Koru is trying to take over the island. And I have to say, I'm horrible at making characters that are supposed to be bad or like die, because I end up liking them, and then I'm like, oh, I don't want them to be bad, or I don't want them to die. <laughs> So after designing Koru, I kind of liked his character and I'm like, hmm, does he have to be a bad guy? And the answer is yes. <laughs> he needs to stay being the bad guy. Now I'm not ruling out the idea of like a redemption arc or something. All I'm saying is that I need him as the main bad guy and I can't just replace him with another character because I like how he turned out. Because if I do that, then I may end up with a less interesting character. Villains can make or break a story, so I want to have a well-planned out villain, and so far I'm liking this one, so I need to keep him as a villain. <laughs> Anyways, we have now come to the end of the video, and here's a look at all the different things I got to design. I am happy with all the different creatures I got to figure out and draw. It's also great to have more of a mental picture for Koru. When I'm able to imagine the character, it really helps with writing instead of them being a super vague image in my brain. But like I said, I do want to revisit his design, so hopefully I'll get to do that in the near future. Before we end, I want to thank my super awesome YouTube members and Patreon patrons for their support. It means so much to me. And thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!